12. It was a winter weather catastrophe that left drivers stranded for more than 24 hours. Tonight we have new information on what happened on Interstate 95 last month. Fox 5's Lindsay Watts is live with those details. Lindsay. Tisha, tonight we've learned the state commissioned independent investigation into the debacle on I-95 is expected to be done on March 15th. Ahead of that, our Freedom of Information Act request is shedding new light on what went so wrong. A nightmare scenario for hundreds of drivers in Stafford County. You're trying to stay warm, but you're running out of gas. People of all stripes, tourists, truck drivers, a U.S. senator stranded together on I-95. And there were an awful lot of people around me who were in packed cars, maybe with kids, maybe with seniors, maybe with pets. There were multiple failures now under investigation, but a source who's worked for many years at Virginia's Department of Transportation says a big part of this was simple math. Not enough plows and equipment in that part of the state, handled by VDOT's Fredericksburg District. We did a FOIA request for that district's mobilization plan ahead of the January 3rd storm. It put 292 plows and pieces of equipment on the roads, including 47 specifically for I-95. Now compare that to the mobilization plan for the storm on January 15th, where less snow was expected. 523 pieces of equipment, including nearly 100 just for 95. For the earlier storm, interstate wreckers, large tow trucks, were on standby only, not to be mobilized unless needed. For the latter storm, six wreckers were on active patrol on 95. I am getting sick and tired of people talking about what went wrong. Then Governor Ralph Northam took heat for his comments about the 95 debacle in his final days in office. We're not seeing this on 95 in Maryland. We're, we're doing the best we can. Before leaving, he ordered an independent review of what happened. We've learned that's being conducted by CNA, a nonprofit research and analysis firm in Arlington. The cost? Nearly $80,000. Ahead of that investigation's completion next month, Fox 5 wanted to know more about communication between VDOT, state police, and the governor's office at the height of the storm. The FOIA cost for those emails? Over $28,000. I have done many FOIA requests in different states, and that estimate sets a world record. I mean, it's more than a third of the cost of that independent investigation. Tonight, Governor Glenn Youngkin's office tells me even though that independent investigation is still underway, VDOT is already implementing new storm response measures. Back to you. All right, Lindsay, thank you. We know you'll stay on top of this for us.